people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend. This is me, Bishop John R. Stevenson, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition to It's a Word Thing. Father, we thank you so very, very much for yet another opportunity to study the Word of God, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that by your Spirit you'd lead and guide us. Reveal to us the deep, hidden truths of the mysteries of your Word. It is for us, those of us who are the body of Christ, to know. So, Father, I pray for special insight for those who are viewing, who have not yet come into the full understanding of who you are through your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for the anointing that's upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Teach us the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. So, my friend, we've been dealing with another topic, and we've been dealing with the topic of what you see matters and your perception is everything. What you see matters and your perception is everything. The Holy Spirit had me to say to us the last couple of times we were together that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are our corrective lenses. There's a, the body of Christ uh, and I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, uh, has a stigmatism uh, because I don't understand how it is that we all read the same Bible, but we all get something different. That tells me that there's a problem in the body of Christ. We are all reading the same Bible, but we're all getting something different out of it. And I don't believe that that's the way it's supposed to be. There is an absolute truth. The Word of God is clear. If we get in the Word of God and spend the right kind of time with God, He will show us. Uh, and we are seeing things, our focus is, is really messed up. And I, I know some people are, uh, are probably going to get offended by the things I'm saying, but we are in a bad place. I've said this before, and I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, and I'm saying this because I love the body of Christ. What you see matters and your perception is everything. Because friend, what I'm able to perceive, watch now, what I'm able to perceive will determine what I'm able to conceive. What I'm able to conceive will determine what I'm able to believe. What I believe will determine what I'm able to receive from God. But everything starts at perception. We looked at a few verses of Scripture, and I want to revisit one uh, in Mark chapter 8, verse 22, as we deal with what you see matters in your perception is everything. In Mark chapter 8, starting at verse number 22, this is the story about the blind man. And so listen to, listen to the, the, the Scriptures right now, because we're in the year of fulfillment. If we're going to experience fulfillment, though, friend, remember, if we're going to experience fulfillment, we have to stay in tune to God, stay in tune to the voice of God. Watch now, listen and obey him quickly. But it starts at my perception, how I perceive a thing determines how I conceive a thing. How I conceive a thing determines how I believe a thing, and how I believe a thing determines how I receive a thing from God. And so watch the, the, the scripture as we read the scripture and, and Jesus is dealing with this blind man. He gives in his sight. Watch the process. Watch what happens. Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 22. And he cometh to Beth, Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man, watch now, by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit in his eye and put his hand upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. He's asking him, friend, he said, okay, now in the beginning, the man can't see anything at all. Jesus spits in his eye, lays his hands on him, and then he asked the man, can he see? 
Watch the next verse, friend. He asked him, can he see? Watch the next verse. Verse 24. He looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Listen, friend, he said, I see men as trees walking. This is where, this is where the, the body of Christ is as a whole. We are seeing things, but we're not seeing things correctly. Because he said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. Okay, my friend, well, well, humanity, we don't look like trees. And trees don't walk. So I'm seeing two things. Watch now, friend. I'm seeing two things. I'm seeing men and I'm seeing trees. But I'm seeing men like trees walking. Friend, we, we know none of that's correct. And so in the body of Christ, we are reading the scriptures and we are, we are preaching out of our pulpits. And this is, the, this is the kind of things that we're doing. We're not being clear in what we're saying. So this is the way people see what we're saying. Okay, is that a man or is that a tree walking? Pray for me, friends, so you understand what God is saying. Because what you see matters, and your perception is everything. He said, I see men as trees walking. Now watch now. And because we don't spend the right kind of time in the word of God, we come up with men as trees walking. And so we start to believe in things that's not true. Okay, so make up your mind. Is that a man or is that trees walking? Which one is it? And God is not the author of confusion. And so I have to spend the right kind of time with God so God will clear things up for me. Now watch what happens now. As he spent a little bit more time with the man, watch what happens. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. Now watch this. Somebody say follow instructions. See, we can't get it, my friends, because we don't follow instructions. We don't live by the word of God the way we should. We, we live according, we live however we want. We take the word of God and we want to apply the word of God according to the way I live or I want to live. No, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to line our, our lives up with the word of God. Line our lives up with the word of God and let my life fit the word of God. What you see matters, and your perception is everything. He tells the man, watch, friend, he, he, after this, watch this. Watch what he do. And he looked up, watch this, and he looked up, and he said, I see men as trees walking. Verse 25, after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored, watch now, friend, and saw every man clearly. He was restored and saw every man clearly. Now watch this, friend. The more time we spend in the word of God, the clearer things will become. The more we spend time studying the word of God, living according to the word of God, applying the word of God to our life, the more we do that, the clearer things become. My stigmatism, my stigmatism gets fixed, gets mended. And so what we have to do, my friend, is we have to make sure that we are seeing things the way God wants us to see it and not the way we want to see it or the way somebody's telling us. Watch this, friend. This is important. Uh, we, we see in the scriptures, we see in the scripture often that God will ask his men of God, what do you see? Why is God asking a person, what do they see, my friend? It's because God want to know if you see things the way he see it. Come on, friend. He want to make sure that you see it the way he sees it. He want to make sure that you're seeing what he sees. He want you to see the way he sees, friend. Because if you don't see the way he sees, there's no way you're going to be able to conceive it. Then you can't believe it. Then you can't receive it. So God want to make sure, my friend, that you can see correctly. What you see matters and your perception is everything. Now watch this, friend. Follow me in the scriptures. I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 11 in Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm going to get there in a minute. Get my, get my, here. Jeremiah chapter 1, we're going to look at verse, verse 11, friend. Watch this, because what you see matters, 
and your perception is everything. And I'm, I'm going to share some things with you, revelations that God gave me about perception, conception, believe, and receive. I'm, I'm going to share this with you because it's important. Because this is where we are uh, this year. We're in the year of fulfillment. And so what I see matters in my perception is everything. I got to make sure that I'm seeing it exactly the way that God wants me to see it. I got to understand this word exactly the way God is saying it, not the way I understand it, friend. Because, see, in our natural education, secular education, we are taught how to recognize things and how to put things together and all that. But when you're dealing with the word of God and when you're dealing with God, you got to go beyond the natural. We got to go beyond the natural, be led by the Holy Spirit and be taught by the Holy Spirit. It's not about what you know in the natural when you're dealing with the word of God. It's about what the supernatural is revealing to you through the Holy Ghost of Almighty God. So we in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11. Watch what, what the scripture says. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Jeremiah, what see, Jeremiah, what do you see? What is that, Jeremiah? Watch, friend. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto, Jer came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, thou have well seen. You see, my friend, he said, thou have well seen. Watch, friend, watch now. Then the Lord said unto me, thou have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Thou have well seen, and I will hasten my word to perform it. So God said, just like when he said, let there be light, the Bible says God saw that everything was good. Everything was well. And so Jeremiah saw what God wanted him to see. He saw what God wanted him to see, friend, because what you see matters. See, until, I'm, until I understand what I see, friend, I can't move forward. Until I understand what I see, I can't move forward, friend. So I got to understand what I see. Excuse me. I'm going to put that right there. Y'all excuse me for that. Watch this now. Uh, let's go to Zechariah, my friend. Zechariah. Zechariah. And we want to go to Zechariah chapter 5. Zechariah chapter 5. <clears throat> and we want to look at verse 1 and 2 in Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Watch this, friend, because what I see matters in my perception is everything. And God will ask us, what do you see? And he's asking us, what do we see? Because he want to make sure we see what he sees, friend. Because until I see it the way God sees it, it's not right. And God is not going to allow me to move on if I don't see things the way he sees it. And the only way I'm going to be in agreement with God is I have to see it the way he see it, friend. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 5. And we'll start at verse 1. Look what it says. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes. Notice he tell, uh, Jesus told the man to lift his eyes up. Right here, Jeremiah says, so I turned and I lifted up mine eyes and I looked. And Thank you, Holy Spirit. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from where cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. If you are going to be able to see what God wants you to see, you have to look to God so that God can correct your stigmatism, give you your correctless lens. That, that's Jesus in the Holy Ghost is your corrective lens. Watch now. Then I turned and I looked up. I, I'm sorry. Then I turned and I lift up mine eyes and I looked and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 20 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for everyone that steal it shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. Notice, friend, God want to know what you see and God want to make sure that you see in the right thing because he's showing you something. And if God is showing you something, friend, you need to want to see it the way he wants you to, not the way you're seeing it. Because if you do that, friend, you're not going to experience fulfillment this year. No way you can because unless you see it the way he see it, you're not in tune with him. 
The only way you're going to experience fulfillment is to be in tune to God's voice and listen and obey him quickly, friend. So watch this now. Let's go to Amos chapter 8. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Before we go to Amos, let's go over here to chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4. Look at verse number 1 and 2. 1 and 2 in Zechariah chapter 4. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. Verse 2. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick of uh, uh, all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, two olive trees by it, one up on the right side of the bowl, and on the, uh, 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 the other uh, up on the left side thereof. So I answered and I spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Now watch this, friend. He said, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with him answered and said unto me, Knowing thou not what these be? And I said, No, Lord. Notice, friend, he said, I don't understand. I don't see what I see it, but I don't understand it. So tell me what this is. See, sometimes, friend, you can't just see something and hear something and just take off running. You need to make sure before you move, you understand what God said, that he's revealed to you what he's revealing to you so that you can see what he wants you to see, friend. Watch this. Verse 6, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's important, my friend, that you see what you're supposed to see, because what you see matters, and your perception is everything. Now let's go over here to Amos. Go back this way. So I can go over here to Amos for you. I'm going to Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. I want to look at verse 7. No, Amos chapter 8, 1 and 2. Amos 8, 1 and 2. Listen to this, friend. Thus have the Lord God shown unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? Notice, God want to know what you see, friend. God want to know if you're seeing correctly. Because it's important that you see. Have you ever been talking to somebody, friend, and you say, you see what I'm saying? What are you asking that person when you say, you see what I'm saying? You're asking if they understand. When God say, what do you see? He's asking, what do you understand? What do you make of this? And God want to make sure that you know exactly what he wants you to know before he can move you on or before you can move on. Verse 2. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come up on my people of, I the, my people of Israel. I will not again pass them anymore. I will not again pass them anymore. What do you see? Let's go over here to Amos chapter 7, and we're going to look at verse 7 and 8. Amos chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Watch this. Thus he shown me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, watch this again, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not again pass them by any more. You see, my friend, so he makes sure before God goes to explaining to him what he's going to do next, he got to first find out, see if Amos will show Amos whether or not he understand where he is right now. Some of us want to move on, friend, and we want to go and do other things, but we don't even understand where we are right now. We don't even see well where we are right now. In secular education, friend, uh, you don't get passed to the next grade until they make sure that you see what they're saying in the, pre in the grade that you're in. If you don't understand, if you can't see how to do the lesson in the first grade, they don't pass you on to the second grade. And God is the same way, friend. If you don't pass the test now, if you don't understand this, 
I cannot move you forward. Jesus said, he said, I speak to y'all, watch this. Jesus said, I speak to y'all in natural things and y'all can't understand. So surely you won't understand the spiritual things that I'll, I'll speak to you in. Glory to God. You, you, can't, you can't move on, friend, until you're seeing correctly. And God want to make sure that you see exactly what you're supposed to see, understand exactly what you're supposed to understand before you move on. What you see matters in your perception, friend. Your perception is everything. Glory to God. I enjoyed the word of God, friend. In Ezekiel chapter 37, you don't have to go there. Let's talk about this for a minute because I want to share some powerful truths with you, some revelation that God gave me about, uh, uh, about e Ezekiel and when he set him in the, in the valley of dry bones. Watch this, friend. God sets him in the valley to dry bones, and he asked him, can these bones live? Watch this, friend. This is the revelation God gave me about some of this. He, he asked him, can these bones live? And watch this. What God was doing was God wanted to see, uh, to show him whether or not he could see what he saw in the bone. See, God didn't see the bones like, like Ezekiel saw the bones. Even though it's a valley of dry bones, God don't see the bones like Ezekiel, but he want Ezekiel to see the bones like he see the bones. Glory to God. This is good stuff, friend. Pray for me, please. So watch this. Ezekiel looking at the bones, and when God asked him, can these bones live? Okay, they dry bones. They dead to him, so he said, God, watch this. He said, Lord, you know. Watch this, friend, because God do know. He said, Lord, you know. So watch this. Next thing is, God, show me or reveal to me what you know. By Ezekiel saying, Lord, you know, it's like, okay, well, I don't know, but you know, so watch this. So why don't you tell me what you know so we can both know what you know? Glory to God. I love this thing for real. Look, friend. <laughs> Look, friend. So when God sees the dry bones, listen, God don't see the dry bones as the end of a thing. Mm -mm. God saw the dry bones. Watch this, friend. What you see matters in your perception is everything. God looking at the dry bones, this is what God sees. God sees something that was. And if it was, watch this, friend, it could be again. That's the way God saw the bones. God also saw the bones as an opportunity, friend. Glory to God. God saw the bones as an opportunity. God saw the bones, watch this now, as a foundation. Lord have mercy. God saw the bones as a foundation, something to build upon, my friend. He didn't see it as, as just dead bones. God saw it as a foundation. He saw it as an opportunity. Glory to God. Let me, let me get on here so I can really make sure I'm, I give you this right here. Watch this here. Ezekiel, his, he, God wanted to know what, what he saw. How do you see it? God saw the bones, watch this, as evidence of what was and what can be again. God saw the bones as an opportunity. Watch this. And a possibility, a foundation, something to build up on. God saw the bones, watch this, not as an ending, but as a beginning. Glory to God, that's good, friend. He didn't see it as an ending. God saw the bones as a beginning. This is something to start with. You got bones. That's a foundation laid already, so now you built up on it. And so God began to show him. He said, son of man, watch this. He said, son of man, speak to the bones. What you see matters in your perception is everything. If you can see these bones as a foundation, if you can see these bones as an opportunity, if you can see these bones as a beginning and not an end, glory to God. Friend, are you hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying right now? You have to view a thing, you, you can't view it in your natural sense. You have to walk by faith and you have to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what that is. Son of man, what do you see? When you look at a situation, your circumstances in life, what do you see? When you look at a, a, a uh, uh, something going on in your life and you think, well, I'm not going to be able to, all I have is this. Okay, but what is that? That's not the end of a thing, friend. It's the beginning. When, when Elisha walks up on the woman, she's gathering her sticks up. She see what she has as an end. That's all I have. That's not what the man of God said, though. He said, okay, wait a minute. Break me off a little piece of that first. Cook me a little cake first. Because he saw it, friend, thank you, Jesus. He saw it as, as something to start with. That's not an end. That's a beginning. He saw it as a possibility. He saw it as a foundation, something to build up on, and that's what he did, friend. The Bible says that, that her meal didn't run out, friend. 
he, he saw that as an opportunity. He saw that as a beginning. He saw it as a foundation, something to build upon. But she saw it as an end when he saw it as a beginning. Glory to God. What you see matters, my friend, and your perception is everything. Friend, I need for you to understand that God wants you to understand that he's showing you something in this season. And we can't be looking at things in the natural the way we look at it in the natural. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight, my friend. We walk by faith and not by sight. And because we walk by faith, friend, we don't see a thing like the world see a thing. Glory to God. If you see somebody, friend, on the side of the road, that's an opportunity for you to share. Come on, friend. You, we pass folks by. They looking for a ride. They want to ride or they, they, they asking for a few pennies. You look at that as somebody begging, friend. You're supposed to look at that as an opportunity to share Jesus with that person. Glory to God. See, we, we, we walk around and we live in fear so much to when the Lord say, give that person a ride. That's the devil. Buy this person something or do this. That's the devil. Friend, you got a stigmatism. You got a stigmatism. But God then gave us some corrective lenses called Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And you have to stop looking at everybody and everything as a threat and something bad. You have to start looking at things as a possibility, as an opportunity, as a, a foundation, as a beginning, and not always the, the means of an end, friend. Because God is wanting us, friend, listen, he wants us to experience fulfillment this year. But I guarantee you, friend, we're not going to experience fulfillment if we don't stay in tune to God. The way you're going to stay in tune to God, friend, watch this, is to listen and obey him quickly. Everything is not the devil, friend. Your flesh is kicking against the prick, so you don't want to do it, friend. What you see matters in your perception, friend, is everything, everything. And God is constantly giving us opportunities, friend, to share this gospel with this lost and dying world. But because the way we see it, we keep seeing things, viewing things like the world view it from a world's angle or point of view. We got to stop that, friend. Say that for me. Stop that. You got to stop that, friend. Listen to God and obey him quickly in this season. I want to tell you how much I appreciate you allowing me to come in your homes and, and to share the word of God with you, break bread with you. I thank you so very, very much for tuning in. And also, I want to say thank you for every one of y'all who's encouraged me, sent me a letter, or even a, a, a sent me an offering and a donation toward uh, the program. I thank you so very, very much. But I want to put a plug in for KPLE, and I'm going to ask you to prayerfully consider sowing into KPLE. This is good ground, my friend. This is good ground. And KPLE is here for you, and they're here for me. And so I want to thank you again. Listen, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you is my sincere prayer for you. Meet me here this same time, same place, next time so we can break the bread of life together. I love you to life. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you, my friend, is my prayer for you. Bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye for now. People all over this world, yeah. People all over this world Say people all over this world They're looking for Jesus